my favorite part of the brain is the middle part of the brain. It's that rat brain that goes, ha, 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 I want things. Give me, give me, give me, I'm hungry. Um, but it does a lot more than that. In fact, we have 15 motives in that middle level rat brain. We have very basic <laughs> motives that are about our bodies, about keeping our bodies in good condition. Um, fear and disgust save us from being eaten from outside by large predators. We would all run, run away. When, what's the biggest predator in Australia? A crocodile <laughs> came in this room. You'd all, your basic ancient instinct of fear, your ancestors would say to you, avoid the crocodile. But disgust is quite similar to fear, except that it's, it's there, it was put in your brain for you to avoid being eaten from inside by little parasites so that you're disgusted by things that have signs that they might be rotten or smelly or bad or might have disease, car disease carriers. And for us in hygiene, that, of course, is the most important motive uh, that drives a lot of hygiene behavior. We talked about hunger, comfort, and without lust, of course, none of us would be here because our ancestors would not have produced us and we would not continue to produce our offspring. Um, we also uh, have, have instincts to create and we are curious so that we can improve our brains and we play to, to improve our brains. But we also, it's terribly important to us to fit in with everybody else. Uh, affiliation is a basic driver. Nurture, to love our children and ensure that they're brought up to be successful to, so that we pass on our genes. Uh, attraction, without attraction, adornment, trying to look nice, who's going to reproduce, who's going to pass on their genes. And love, very important, of course, for pair bonding. Um, hoarding, <laughs> I... I, I uh, I moved house recently and I went through all my cupboards. How many of you are the same as me? Huge basket of soaps from different hotels that I've been in in the world today. <laughs> Bin them all. What you, <laughs> what a, what a, how ridiculous are we collecting stuff we don't need? A status big driver for all of us, even though we don't like to admit it. And uh, the one thing that makes us pure, that, that humans have and other animals don't have, which is the drive to punish people who do bad things, which is what allows us to work to be uh, the cooperative species that we are. So a basic evolutionary primer in, in the basic things that drive what we, what we do, that make us what we are, that drive our behavior. Um, so a quick review of some hand-washing research in the light of that theory. Um, from uh, the paper is in uh, the uh, uh, Health Education Review, uh, 11 different countries, formative research, uh, asking the four basic questions that formative research always needs to ask, which is what is the behavior we care about, who is carrying out the behavior that we care about, why are they doing it, and how can we reach them, how can we change, how we, how can we change that behavior. Um, so disgust. All the countries we studied came out as number one driver of hygiene behavior. When you're dirty, you shouldn't go out or meet people. You risk contaminating them or upsetting them with nauseous smells. We wash our, everyone said they wash their hands with soap after eating fish. It's a very, very common contaminant that people feel the need to wash their hands from. Anything that comes out of a human being is so bad from Ghana. Um, comfort, being in optimal conditions for flourishing. Uh, smelly, sticky hands are not comfortable. Uh, so people wash, to me for, people wash hands, use soap to be comfortable. Um, very important driver of care caring for children. We found in every country the most important thing to the mother was her child. Um, all I do is for my children first. I work to have money for my children. And so a new mother particularly will do anything to assure the well-being of her child, not necessarily for health reasons, not necessarily for reasons of, 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 of germ avoidance, but for the, for the, for the flourishing of their child. Um, it, I tried on various shirts this morning before I came, and I realized one of them had a, had, a, had a stain on it. So I decided that if you guys were going to listen to me, I probably better appear to be hygienic. <laughs> so, I, so that is a reflection of how... if if I want to have some influence over you, I have to be hygienic. And we found this everywhere we went. Um, status is a really important driver of hygiene. If, for example, the last one, if you don't wash, they look at you like a pig in the school. Affiliation, washing hands to fit in. A big driver of hand washing behavior. Unfortunately, a big driver of no hand washing behavior because only 4% of people washing hands with soap. We do what everyone else does. No one else washes hands with soap keeps the rates of hand washing really low. It's a massive problem. 
The worst thing any government could do is, 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 is stand up and say, hand washing with soap is very low in this country, um, and you should all wash your hands with soap, because that's going to drive down washing hands, hands washing with soap, not, not increase it. Um, attraction, of course. How can you be attractive if you're dirty? Very important driver. Um, but we also found, and this comes back to something that was ha- we were talking about in our group yesterday, that health is not a motivator. Health is, health, you saw health didn't appear in the list of basic motives that we have. Um, people don't really believe, even though they may know it in a level one, uh, at, a level th- at level three in their rational brains, they know it. They don't really believe that hand washing with soap is going to improve health. Uh, it doesn't work, and it's not, and it's not a driver. Um, so our tick list, basically, the most important drivers were probably affiliation, in other words, doing like everybody else, and disgust, um, that comfort and nurture may work and attraction uh, difficult. But uh, So let me, sh- let, let, so some um, colleagues in, um, uh, so we tested some of that. We, we developed a variety of messages based on those, um, based on those concepts and tested them in a, in a motorway service station uh, in the UK. And uh, we found that um, the messages that worked best were, um, is the person next to you washing their hands with soap? <laughs> and don't take the loo with you. So again, disgust and affiliation, two most important drivers. Now, what can you do with motives like that? Okay, ready to go? Did you wash your hands? No gems on me. Always wash your hands. (laughs) Which motive is that? This is the second one of the lust attraction. Did you wash your hands? Always wash your hands. Ooh, uh. The next one. You guys are the best. Did you wash your hands? No gems on me. No gems on me. <laughs> Uh, I can't do the accent. Uh, I haven't got time to tell to talk about the other drivers of behaviour. Habit, of course, terribly important. Um, <laughs> formative research in India filming mothers hand washing behaviour. This is highly ritualized behavior, the same every day, and everybody doing the same thing. She's going out for defecation, then we cut the film. Obviously, we don't film that part of it. She comes back, and she has a ritualized um, hand washing. Um, well, it's not just a hand washing, it's a cleansing um, practice that she does every day in the same way. And in fact, all of our films from the same village showed exactly the same practice. 24 different women doing almost exactly the same thing. Uh, we actually have a logger in the bottom of that. Um, wash can. Um, so she cleans her face, she cleans her legs, she cleans her arms. And where's the soap? See the soap? Nope, no soap. So the daily routines are highly, that, that's, that's, how, that's a pattern of daily routines that are highly um, similar from person to person. Um, and we've broken down behavior into a pattern of routines and seen how, you, how difficult it is to actually insert soap into people's daily routines. Um, so what did we learn from that exercise? We learned that disgust, affiliation, comfort, and nurture were the most important motivators, that probably we needed to train kids into new habits, but also new mums is a great opportunity to get new habits um, and to change routines, uh, that probably... The most important driver for mothers was to teach their children good manners. And manners is an area we're going to do a lot more research in because actually hygiene manners are fundamental to almost everything we do every day. Um, And yet they're almost invisible. And um, the question of how we get manners in the first place and how we use those manners uh, to fit in with our social world is very important. 
um, that the settings that matter are um, cases that are the social settings, what people actually do, the norms, the local norms, um, the biological parts of the setting, contamination, especially invisible contamination is very important to people. And there are physical cues that we need. We need facilities, but we also need uh, cues to hand washing. Uh, we also need better objects. And um, I'm sure most of you are aware of the work that's been going on looking at um, different um, supports for hand washing. Um, this one is probably the one that has the most, um, the most promise um, rather than the, the, the research that went into developing this showed that people didn't like using those old, recycled, rubbishy old things and wanted a fancy new um, hand washing stand. And this one is uh, designed to be about $3. Um, there's a resource that we've developed um, that some of you may like to have a look at if you're interested in hygiene promotion. Uh, it's called Choose Soap. Um, it's uh, full of tools and techniques you can use for promoting um, hand washing with soap. Uh, and they're all available free to download. Um, but I wanted to, to go back to the point of, um, sure, Eddie, I um, want to go back to the point of how we get to scale, how we find the resources to reach those millennium, to, to reach my millennium development goals. And one of the things that's, one of the developments that's most exciting um, is uh, this working with the soap companies. And this soap company in particular has made a pledge to reach a billion people with hand washing messages by 2015. And that is large-scale public health development, and it's very exciting to be working with them to help them develop that. We need a lot more work in advocacy, and there's a lot to be learned from the inspired efforts uh, around Global Hand Washing Day. When is Global Hand Washing Day? Yay, we know, you see? Two years ago, nobody knew, the, knew that, but now the whole world knows um, about Global Hand Washing Day. Um, we've pulled together um, a research agenda, which is in a paper that's just come out in the Lancet um, uh, lots of infectious diseases, saying that there's a lot that we don't know about how to improve better hygiene, but there's an awful lot that we do and that we can really move forward from where we are. Uh, some of the things we need to know more about is how to measure hygiene. Uh, this is a, a soap logger. Um, we can give people uh, soap with an accelerometer inside it and use it to measure the effect of programs. We're running a big trial in India shortly where we're going to be doing, using this approach. Uh, my colleague um, is also working on how we're going to develop habits and, uh, and how, what are the best ways are of changing people's habits. And for that, we need to wire up homes with electronic systems. And that's going to be starting in India shortly. So we're nearly there. We understand behavior better. Um, we have programs, for example, the Scaling Up program that Eddie can talk about, um, which uh, has used uh, 16 million of Gates money to improve hand washing in four countries and the results are expected from that soon. Uh, we're learning how to work with local gov government. We're seeing capacity growing. Uh, we're seeing community of practice. We're seeing industry on board. So I think we can make that connection, go that last mile if we decide to invest the money in it. And if we do, then maybe we can think about what our MDGs should be for hygiene. Those are my submissions, uh, but we need to talk about it post-MDGs. What are we going to be? promoting in future. So thank you very much.